You are now listening to the number one podcast. You have been digital. Interrupted. So what's up, what's up, guys? You guys already know. It's another episode of Digitally Interrupted. So if you haven't had opportunity to, please, if you're listening to this, please like, subscribe to the podcast. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. So as you guys know, every Thursday we're here for a new subject, new person possibly. And so today we have a special guest here. I'm not going to say she's a special guest because she was, uh, she actually gave me the opportunity. Yeah, I was going to say she actually gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, shoot for a Nike spec shoot. Um, She has a lot of great accolades under her belt. She has a lot of great titles. So I'm going to let this young lady introduce herself and, you know, let the world know who you are. Hey guys, um, a lot of you probably don't even know who I am. My name is Rachel Connect. Um, I'm originally from Titton Falls, New Jersey, but now I'm living in Ocean Township. If you guys know the two towns, you know that they're very, very close by, so I haven't really done too much traveling. But um, I went to the local high school. I went to Monmouth Regional, go Falcons. And then straight out of Monmouth Regional, I went off to the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. And if you're familiar with FIT, it is a two plus two program. So you go for two years, you graduate, you get your associates, then you do another two for the bachelors. I did two years in advertising and marketing communications, fell in love with it, then did another two years in the bachelors, same program uh, with a minor in economics. So I have a financial background as well. And I graduated this past May during COVID. So wasn't like, a real graduation, but straight out of that graduation, I got my first full-time job. And now I'm with a company called The Shoe Fairy, which is a women's uh, bodybuilding competition accessories company, very niche market. Uh, I'm the marketing manager for them. And then I also have four other accounts that I manage right now on social media. So I'm all advertising, fitness, all that good stuff. All right, so let's just plug it real quick because we might as well just plug it now. So she knows how to make you look good, guys. So if you need somebody that can help you in, you know, uh, I want to say enhance your image, um, definitely hit this young lady up. You know, give them, I guess, let them know where they can connect with you at real quick. No pun intended. <laughs> Instagram, my full name is Rachel, R A C H E L underscore connect. K-N-E-C-H-T. It looks like Next. It is Connect. So connect with me. And I also have a website. It's called thatfitchick.net. It's a play on words with the Fashion Institute of Technology and obviously being a fitness chick, which is a whole nother story I could definitely get into. But we'll I'll let Eric. Into it. Yeah, we'll 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 get into that. Yeah, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Um so you know, we, you know, what I've heard was, you know, I'm from New York, so I'm definitely familiar with FIT. Um, I'm familiar with what they do out there. I'm familiar with a couple of students who went there. Um, so I know, I know it's definitely an intense, it's like a very intense program uh, that you guys go over there. So you probably went through loopholes. You probably went through some ropes. You know, you probably had to jump through some hoops, but you made it out. But unfortunately, you made it out in a pandemic. And I know you, I, I know you probably went, you know, and I feel bad because everybody has gone through it. Um, so what was, what was that, you know, for, before the FIT, you know, we heard, you know, your name is Rachel, but where does like Rachel come from? Where does she, where, where does that start? Where does Rachel start at? So, you know, tell us about your childhood. Tell us how your childhood, like, tell us how it was in your childhood. Like start there. I had a really interesting childhood. So I, I'm an only child. I was always really, really close with both of my parents. What's unique about what uh, our family business was, was, is, or is, my dad is a chiropractor and he was a chiropractor in a local gym. So I grew up around all of these bodybuilders, fitness chicks all the time. But the crazy part about me was I had nothing to do with any of that. I was actually a really overweight child. And I was kind of like my parents, like fat kid, which is like the craziest thing ever. Crazy. I wasn't into it at all. I was, I mean, at my heaviest, I was about 50 pounds heavier than when I got to my lowest, uh, which was from like bodybuilding, competing, whatever. But I had no interest in any of it. I actually sang. 
I would sing, like kind of pop into like local bands. I did a, um, a kids uh, music program called Rocket Live at the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with that, like in the area right. as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I think my love of marketing kind of came from that because I was marketing myself to like the local, like uh, new big music venues. If you're familiar with the Jersey Shore, like uh, right. Stone Pony, Wonder mm-hmm. Bar. So I was doing those. I did the Count Basie. So I loved the marketing. I loved networking, like in the gym. One of my first jobs would be to like stand in the gym and hand out my dad's like business cards to people. Right. I just was always like that. Like I loved people. I loved talking. I loved I loved making money. So I loved like if it helped my dad out and if he paid me like 20 bucks to go do it, I would just do it. Right. Um, but fitness was never like my thing. I, I liked fashion and I was a bigger girl. So the, the fashion institute, I mean, it's like every little girl's dream to go mm-hmm. there and they have a great marketing program, like you said. So that's kind of how that came about. That's dope. So with with the weight, like, you know, how how was it? Like, how was you carrying it? Like, you know, was you carrying it confidently or, you know, was there some insecurities there that you felt at that time? Like, you know, talk about the mental, because I know for myself, I was a heavy child myself. And I knew that once I finally lost the weight, you know, my confidence grew, but I didn't know how to handle it because I never had it. You know, where some people can carry their weight confidently, you know, we know a lot of women who are plus size, you know, women who consider themselves overweight, but they carry it so effortlessly, you know, you would never know that they might be insecure. Maybe it's just the front. We never know. You know, did you did you front about how you felt about your weight or did you always know you was going to do something about it? I feel like it's the type of thing that comes from like outside sources, like even like as kids like we're so happy we're so naive and then it's like somebody brings up like an insecurity of ours and then all of a sudden it becomes like this issue like as you get older I think it was the type of thing like hearing it you know my parents might say like you know you might you might want to skip dessert tonight mm-hmm. or like they might have said like oh you know so and so from the gym you know mentioned maybe you should start working out there you know like stuff like that and I think it just it kind of grew over time I also since I was singing I was getting like content back from like stage shots, stuff like that. Right. And I would look at them sometimes and be like, oh my God, <laughs> I have to do something. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was like, the camera, I, the camera definitely adds like 10 pounds onto you, believe it or not. <laughs> right. I, I, used to th- I used to think it was like a myth. And I was like, oh, you know, when I finally put on some weight, you know, I was like, oh, because I went from this like real heavy kid to this like real skinny kid. Like I just went from like, I was like, I guess I was like, a hundred pounds when I was about like 12 and next thing you know like I get like 13 and I'm like 134 but I'm like cut and now I got taller you know and so at that point my confidence was just more like arrogance because you know I, I didn't know what this was you know people pay me attention now people talk to me effortlessly like I can talk to people and I'm just like <laughs> I crack jokes all the time but then it's like you know when I finally put the weight back on I was like oh shit like, nah, this, nah, this ain't not, nah, I know what it feels like to be that kid again. You know what I mean? So, I mean, shit, now nah, I don't care. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I went on, I went on my little vegan diet and I'm doing my little thing thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying like 30 pounds. Yeah, I'm chilling. Like I'm chilling now, you know, I'm Gucci now. So, um, I'm not no bodybuilder by, by no means, you know what I mean? That's, that's a different monster. Um, but you know, so as you, you know, as you grew up, you know, you say you were close with both your parents, you know, um, would you be able to like decipher and describe your relationship with them each like how it was with them separately like how was that relationship with both of them well it's interesting so i i am really close to both of them again only child so it's like you're just you're basically friends with the two of them Mm -hmm. um my dad is like a big fitness guy Uh, obviously like being a chiropractor in the gym you guys know what chiropractic is it's like you know, homeopathic type medicines. He was always mm-hmm. into like vitamins and herbs and stuff right. like that. So I definitely got that fitnessy background from him. He taught me like, I mean, when I was a kid, like he would kind of like show me around the gym, like things like that. He got me into that. He took me to my first bodybuilding show when I was mm-hmm. probably like 14, 15, which was cool. Uh, so we did like, you know, girl dad things like sports, like golf, like he would take me on hikes, you know, like long walks, stuff like that. 
my mom's very girly, but my mom also really loves music. So oh, wow. that like concert performing side, I kind of got that from her. Gotcha. Concerts, nail, you know, like. The right, concert. right. That's what's, so like, um, you know, is it safe to say, I don't know if this is like a rumor, like when dads have like, like their only girl, like, is it like they try to always make them the son that they always wish they had? Or did he like, you know, let you just be that girly girl that you wanted to be? I think it's like a mix of both, but fun fact, I actually was supposed to be a boy and my name was going to be Daniel, but then it was last minute, Rachel. Dang, what a, that's what you call a surprise, surprise. So, <laughs> so, um, so, you know, you know, and, and so the, the relationship you have with both of them, you know, you, you know, did, do you feel like, do you, do you favor a parent? Trust me, we're not going to tell nobody. Like, do you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you favor? Do you favor somebody more? And and if you do, does the other one know? Hey, all right. We can we can get deep now. <laughs> all right. But no. Um. I mean, look. I'll just now I'll, like keep it real, right? Mm -hmm. So, what kind of sparked my weight loss too in a huge way? My parents split when I was eighteen. Mm -hmm. Uh, very messy divorce. It actually took like even like two years or so for it to actually be finalized. It was just a mm -hmm. disaster. Okay. In that time, when you're 18, I mean, your emotions are like running wild, like so much, you know, it's happening. And because of the situation that had happened, I favored, you know, my mother a little bit more. I felt for her. She was totally blindsided. Right. And um, like, you know, life was tough. But uh, I had a really weird situation because my dad was, you know, the breadwinner mm -hmm. and he wanted to keep the house that I grew up in. So in order for me to have like that financial stability security, uh, I had to actually stay with my father. So I had mm -hmm. this great relationship with my mother, but right. she moved out of the house and I was like stuck with my dad and we were together for like four years. Mm. Yeah, that's I was gonna say that's crazy. No, that's that's even it's crazy because you don't really I mean you hear that sometimes, like you'll hear a story like that sometimes, but it's kinda you'd be like, nah, that's just a movie. You know what I mean? That's kinda like of a storyline that you hear in movies, but or maybe it's just things that people don't ever talk about. You know what I mean? So like I really appreciate you even bringing that up. Um, you know, so you know, be, being being this adult now, you know, not even you're not a kid no more. You know, you're an adult, you know, and you're kind of navigating through life you know, trying to figure out your way where at this point, you know, when everything happened, were you still trying to figure you out or did you know who you was and what you wanted to do? Not at all. I think I still don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know the answer to that. <laughs> I still I don't even know what I want to be when I grow up, but um, yeah, it was hard, but I always just tell people like, like sit back and think about that guys. Mm -hmm. An 18 year old girl with like a 50, I don't know what my dad was at the time, like a 52 year old man, like single bachelor. Like mm. just, just think about that concept. You know, like I'm an only child. I have no siblings. So like, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's single and he's, you know, running wild. Like, right, so right, right, situation. right. I was going to say, yeah, like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's I'm crazy. like trying to find yourself. I also was balancing school. I, I lived at home. I was commuting up to the city for FIT. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. So you stayed in Jersey, even though you was at FIT. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. That's a, damn, that's a, that's about a good, that's like an hour, two hours. Well, that's a total of like two hours of commuting on the train back and forth. Or was you taking the bus? No, it was actually a total of three. It was one and a half each way. Damn. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. When you put it, yeah. When I think about it, I'm like, oh, okay. I got it now. Right. Damn. That's crazy. I mean, I did it when I was in Perth Amboy, but that was like um, 45 minutes okay. though. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was still two or three trains. Uh, describe your experience in FIT. Like, what was that experience like though? Like what, you know, from your associates program, did you see any growth? You know, what was changing around you? Like as you were growing in school, like what was changing around you? Well, obviously, you know, all the craziness I just said at home too. But once I got off that train in Penn Station, seriously, it was like I was in a different world. I love the city, but I love Jersey too. It's, it's a different type of love. I love the fast pace. I love the creativity at my school. It, it was just so inspiring, even just like walking down the hallway, the fashion, the different cultures, the languages. 
I also love just diversity. That school has everything, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like I was the minority, you know, like there was just everything that you can imagine from around the world. And then, you know, uh, like exchange students and all sorts of cool stuff. But there was a lot of growth. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with FIT, like I said, it is the two plus two. So you jump right into your program right away. So there's none of that like bullshit, you know, like college, you know, English 101. There is right. English, but it's like catered more towards like business and like things that actually can be applied, you right. know, or, or math. Uh, I think my first math class was like, uh, uh, like accounting or something like it, mm -hmm. it was like so specific for like what I was doing um so you grow up really fast that's where I'm going with this like you I think a lot of colleges like kids go away for that first year whether if you, if you live at home or go there or whatever like you just kind of like go through it like you could have just went to the local community college to get the courses done and you know call it a day but like FIT, like they, they treat you as adults, um, very small classroom sizes. The max, I think we're like 25 students. So you're not sitting in like that 300 person auditorium. So you're really like engulfed, like in that lesson, you know, like yeah, it, it's cool. I've been, it's I've been cool. in that big auditorium before. Mm. Right, and you're just like a number. It's not right. like personalized. Right. right. Um, did you make some great friends that you're still friends with now at school or? I um, know, it sucks. It's like, so COVID happened the last semester. So it's like, I... Mm. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, this, this, whole, this whole pandemic threw everything off, you know, but it also made the hustlers in us, you know, come out, you know. So when, you know, when I guess, you know, I, I just want to give everybody like a, a very like strict timeline here. So you graduate now, how old do you when you graduate? College? Yeah, like how old do you now? Well, I graduated at you know, technically at 21, I turned 22 this past summer. So I'm 22 years old. All right. So, you know, 22 year old woman now from this 18 year old new adult, you know, four years go through, you know, you get to experience some things, you know, give me, I guess, like three of your best or you're like your, the, the, the three most memorable memories that you can have in the last four years of your growth that you just loved. Uh, I would say first uh, was probably starting my blog. I did that uh, June of 2018. So I was probably about, I was like 19 turning 20 years old. Um, I did it at the end of my associates. So what I wanted to do um, with my weight loss journey and uh, like my love of marketing was to create a website. It was like on my, you know, New Year's goals or whatever for that year. Uh, to document my journey, also get into like web development, web, web design, and track like the analytics of like who was coming to the site and all that good stuff. So that was a really, really cool uh, opportunity for me. Um, with that, actually another really cool opportunity that I was given, uh, one of my first like little breaks uh, for like side hustle jobs, I worked with uh, a local company, Jersey Shore Supplements, and I created their $10,000. It's like a challenge, like a weight loss challenge. I developed their website, and then they called me again to do it the second time around for a second challenge, which was really cool. So that was another really big thing. Um, and I would say probably my first time competing in bodybuilding, I had hit uh, a certain weight uh, about... I think it was like same time, like a year later, like June of like 2019, like right after Memorial Day, possibly. Um, I was sitting at like 40 pounds less or so than my heaviest weight when I first started, you know, going to the gym and everything, changing up my diet. And I was like, you know what? Like, 
I want to do it. I want to do a bodybuilding show. So I lost 10 pounds in 10 weeks. I coached myself and I took home third place, which was really cool. Nice. 10, wait, a pound a week? It's very extreme. All right. And I All coached right. myself. So I had like no idea really what I was doing. I just did everything I did right, you know, up until that you point. You were just out like, here reckless. You were just recklessly losing weight. Like there was, you was just like, I got to get this weight down no matter what. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, but all right. So, you know, that kind of leads me into like where I was going. So, you know, with your three greatest memories, you know, I know the best, I know the most, probably the, the, probably the most memorable one for you is like, you know, you finally drop this weight and you actually do something that you probably never thought you would do because of where you come from. You don't think about fitness, but you're about to do a bodybuilding show. You know what I mean? So what was that you know what what drove you to like complete that you know what was that all right i'm gonna do it and now i'm gonna complete it like in between all of that what was that like what was that experience like actually really interesting but like come to think of it uh i was i was with someone uh through most of my high school and all through college right and uh, they would always, you know, question me kind of like on the weight loss and stuff, because you kind of get to a point where it's like, I'm sure you, you know, probably even have people ask you too. It's like, they want to know, do you want to lose more weight? Are you happy where you are? Are you trying to gain some back? You got a little skinny there, you know, like it just gets kind of weird. So he would say to me things like, like, what's like the final stamp? You know, I'm like losing weight because he was with me the whole time, the whole mm -hmm. journey. So he's like, when do you get to a point where you're like going to stop? And my logic was, well, let me do this one final thing as like that stamp. Like, mm. oh my God, I took myself from there to here all by myself. And I did it, you know, it was a full like 50 pounds, you know, from the right. heaviest to the lowest. So I think that kind of did it. It was going to be like that final stamp. But you become addicted, so it never really becomes like that end goal because now you want to do new things with it. You know, so you're always constantly trying to transform your body in different ways and seeing like what different muscles you can bring out to the forefront a little bit more than the other. It's like so you'd be like, oh, my shoulders are cut. Now let me see if I can get these arms up just a little bit more or get a little bit more pump. You know, um, do you now? You know, with you saying that you was in a relationship, so how does one be in a relationship with somebody that's you know also you know for somebody now did you get with this person when you was at your peak you know at your highest weight no uh now we're going to go into the dating stories i think we're taking this yeah, so <laughs> no i i was with this person uh starting in high school like you know okay. seriously no background of fitness and mm -hmm. We ended up splitting up right after I finished my, my bodybuilding show. Uh, there were other things in the relationship, but guys, I will tell you, if you have other aspects in your life not going great, like don't expect bodybuilding to help. I mean, it's a, at the end of the day, and I work in it, you know, it, it's a very selfish sport. So you're giving your all to your meal plan and your training and you can't go out for date night because you're too focused on eating only this and going to sleep at eight o'clock, you know, or whatever. It's like it, it soiled the relationship and for better or for worse, you know, that's just the way it was. And we broke up at that time, but I was on this, you know, bodybuilding high and whatever else I ended up in my next relationship going into one with a true bodybuilder hmm. well for one we're going to tell people she just dropped some jewels so um stick to a meal plan go to sleep at eight take that one got it note it now so back to that so um you know so now you know you're in this you're dating this bodybuilder um now is this and is this an inspiring situation or is this a situation that's draining you a little bit of both uh I, I feel like I don't know, maybe I'm just a spiritual person but like God gives you like what you need at like that time I think like at that time I needed that I needed that you know uh reassurance that like you know you are working hard and let's work hard together and like mm -hmm. just be in your own little bubble of you know 
the eight o'clock bed, you know, bedtime <laughs> right. and meal plans. Right. You know, like that just was what I needed at that time. But but I feel like I'm like a, a well rounded person that I couldn't just live that you know, life of just that. Strict life, right. But but was it it was um it was basically it was like what did you feel like you got more structure being with somebody that was fully in it just as much as you was? Like, did you feel like it gave you more structure as far as like how you took care of yourself? Not just you got to be stuck in this lifestyle, but it made you more conscious and more aware of your body and what you put in it and what you do to it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense then. That makes sense. So I know your dad was probably like, a, like a static probably when you were doing it. Um, you know, how, how did, how did mom feel? I mean, it's interesting with mothers because it's like, you know, if you call her and you're like, I'm hungry, I'm tired. She's like, go eat, you know, like go rest. Like, what are you doing then? You know, because she loves you and she cares about you. She doesn't want to hear that you're, you know, doing this extreme, but you know, that father, you know, mentality is like, do five more, and, you mm -hmm. know, like go harder. So <laughs> it's different. <laughs> I mean, but I guess I guess it's like the best of both worlds when you think about it, though. You know, like you have somebody who's just like that's gonna care for you as much as you probably are looking for, and then you got the one person be like, you know, what? I need to push today. Yeah, Dad, I'm at the gym. Five more. There you go. Like that's your that's your push for the day. You know, it's the best of both worlds. Um, so you know, with with your mom, like, you know, when you know now that you're kind of into your like you're in yourself now. Like you are more grown into yourself, you know, you are working, you finish school, you know, you're, you're on your own. You are now your own woman. How has that played in the relationship with your mom now from the fact that you kind of stayed with your dad to kind of have that, you know, just to have that safe haven to now where you're on your own? Like, do you look at your mom different? Do you, um, you know, describe that relationship with you guys now. It's interesting because I think she knew too, like me and my dad, um, you know, it, it was getting hard sometimes, you know, there were a lot of like conflicts of interest, you know, living together and whatever. And when I got this job and my side job seemed to level out really good, my dad had brought up to me, you know, I think it's time that, you know, you look for a place obviously this past summer, I mean, people didn't even know what was happening this year. And like my father was telling me, go find an apartment. I'm like, I don't even know, you know, how long I'm going to stay at this job. And, you know, right, if right, these right. other ones are going to close. It's funny. So, but sh she was really happy for me. So our relationship has been really great because I think she's just, she's proud and she's happy like to see me like spread my wings and uh, take all of these experiences like the bodybuilding lifestyle and the lenient, you know, musician, like, you know, fat Rachel background, like just, I don't know, just, I'm like a well-rounded person now. Right. And, um, you know, I know you had, um, you know, so, you know, me and you had talked about, you know, some things with your mom, you know, and, you know, you know, um, you had, you know, we had talked about my last episode um, with the young lady talking about cancer or whatnot, you know, um, talk like, you know, talk about the phone call, the first call, you get a call or was it in person? Did something happen? You know, talk about from when you found out. So like so what actually, what actually happened, Eric, is that, uh, in college, uh, she probably will hate me that I don't even remember the year. It might have been 2018, 2019. I actually took her, took her. I was the one who took her to a colonoscopy appointment, right? Mm -hmm. Like as a kid, that's kind of like a funny thing to take your parent to. But she right. has to get one done. You know, you're, she's at that age, whatever. I take her. The doctor calls like two days later or something. They found something. But like something that shouldn't have been there. It was like, you know, some little piece somehow, you know, she ended up having to get it removed, whatever, of cancer. Uh, so they thought that they got it. You know, this must have been still like 2019, like sometime mid-year. Um, somehow it came back uh, January of 2020, so a full year ago, right? 
I'm just starting prep for my second show now. I'm dating the bodybuilder. I'm super, super focused, right? I kind of forget if it was like a, a phone call one day or if we sat down together, but um, she uh, got like a test result back. It immediately came back. She had stage three, uh, like rectal cancer. That's crazy. Wait, so it went from thinking they had it to now stage three. So, you know, where are you at mentally at this point? Like, do you want to quit the show? Like, do you just want to give up on everything and just kind of just be there for mom? Like, what's going on? It was crazy. So COVID, uh, well, actually COVID didn't start exactly until March, but what was first happening was, now me and my mom still didn't live together. So Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, she, she, uh, she kind of lives with like a boyfriend or the boyfriend at least comes and takes care of her, you know? So, um, I was commuting to college, but I wasn't going every day. My last semester, I was going like two days a week and then like doing little social media jobs from home on the side. So I was kind of able to take her to the chemo and or to the uh, radiation appointments. Chemo is the pill. So taking her mm-hmm. to the radiation appointments. Mm-hmm. But COVID was like starting like a couple of weeks later. So these hospitals, you couldn't come inside. So right. it was just such a weird time. So like I'm, I'm on prep because we still didn't know like if the show was getting canceled. So I'm eating like chicken and rice in my car, waiting for my mother in the radiation appointment. You know, it's like, I just, I didn't even know what to do. The start of 2020, I mean, everybody had a hard 2020, right? right, right. So, so I'm just preaching to the choir here. Mm. But yeah, it was definitely, it, it was hard. <laughs> it was a lot. Man. Yeah. You know, um, but you know what what's going on now though you know now that we're in 2021 like what's going on she's in remission there, there you go that's what we you know we like to hear that that's what we like to hear around here we like to hear positive endings here um yeah everything everything is good uh she just got back actually from lab work and everything like I, i'm she'll hate me that i don't know the terms i'm sorry mom but uh every, everything is good she's clear anything they needed to remove is removed and so what have you learned now as this, uh, you know, being a daughter to mom, like what have you learned, like as far as like maybe some things that you may have not learned about your mom before, like is there any qualities that you was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that she had this in her, like, you know, what, what, what new, what qualities have you now realized about your mom? She is one tough ass, <laughs> don't know why to say. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Hey, you know what I mean? If, if that's what she is, that's what she is. You know, like that is exactly what she is. Um, you know, shout out to your mom and congrats. And, you know, we, we wish that, you know, she stays that way, you know, and lives a, f- you know, uh, fruitful life and whatnot, you know, so shout out to mom, uh, one time. And, um, you know, so, so, you know, now you, you know, now you can kind of clear your, your spirit now your mom is your mom is good you know from what you know you got this great job now you know at the shoe fairy you know describe the shoe fairy because i think that people that are going to listen to this they are because i didn't want to get there yet because i hate just jumping right into what you know people are going to think i'm gonna talk to you about i kind of like dig a little bit then go into it so um now you know you're in the fitness you're more aware of you know your body you're you're aware of more like um you're from more you're more familiar with like you know science and things that you got to do to in order to you know help yourself and also you give information to help others you know how does the shoe fairy fit into your everyday um like into your mission like into whatever mission that you're trying to accomplish like how does the shoe fairy fit in there it's actually a really good tie-in from talking about my mother, who I look up to as a really strong woman, to talking about the shoe fairy. Because the shoe fairy is literally like for women, by women. It's the coolest thing ever. Um, my boss, I work for a woman named Alexa. She literally designed um, a competition heel that is comfortable. Like it never existed before on the market uh, for uh like women's bodybuilding competitors. So there's a couple of divisions, uh, like bikini figure, like these girls need certain heels for the stage, right? So if you've seen the heels, they look like little glass slippers mm-hmm. and they're so uncomfortable for your feet. 
like I mean, it just feels like you're walking like on I don't even know like nails <laughs> you That's know crazy. like you're okay. pushing in your toes you know and it's hard so she designed like the whole like insole it's got like a wider toe bed it's flexible like it is so comfortable like it feels like I, I can't even tell you like you're wearing sneakers like on stage it's awesome so I mean what's cool about it though is it's for women by women so it's her uh, it's an office manager named Bianca and it's me. There's three of us and we run the company. I do the marketing. Bianca does like the orders, the fulfillment, mm -hmm. um, like customer service emails and stuff like that. My boss loves to create and design. You know, we do the content photos. She sets up shoots. Uh, it's just really, really cool stuff. Well, well, well. So excuse me but so with this shoe fairy um how has that experience been for you because it's a company that is <coughs> no covid i promise um <laughs> socially distancing Yo. myself back wait i'm gonna put the camera over here so keep right off. keep off right keep you off. Know? <laughs> but um so um let me ask that again so with the shoe fairy, how does that feel to be a part of a company that, you know, um, is ran by women? You know, normally we don't, you know, we hear a lot of businesses being ran by women, but in the fitness industry, it's there probably, but we probably never hear about it. But it seems like you guys have kind of like made your mark, you know, and kind of like made your stamp and people know who you are. So describe that feeling of being a woman in a business that's ran by women. Like, what does that feel like? It's really cool. It's really powerful. But we also, you know, we, we cater to women too. Like we, and I hate saying it like that. Like, I feel like we, we stay in our lane a little bit too, you know, like we're, we're not reaching out to the, you know, when you think of bodybuilders, like the Arnold Schwarzeneggers and whatever, unless they're buying for their girlfriends or mm -hmm. something like that, or they want to just look at the girls in bikinis. Mm -hmm. But we, we stay in our lane, but we also like know how to speak to our audience, which I think is so key in marketing. Like we're for women, by women, and we're, you know, teaching you how to be more confident and comfortable and sexy on stage. Yeah. I mean, uh, plug it in, like, you know, let them know where, you know, if anybody's listening to this, let them know where they can, you know, reach out to you guys for an order. Yeah, it's, it's the website is shoefairyofficial.com and our website is at the shoe fairy underscore. The shoe fairy was already taken, so we have to put the underscore. I got you. I, we, are, we know how that goes. Make sure you put that underscore before the shoe fairy. So, um, so, you know, uh, I, I guess it's, it's more or less now. You know what what do you what do you do like what are you looking to do in the future like you know you're young like you know you're pretty much just starting your adulthood you know you just came out of your teenage i would say even though people would say when you turn 20 that's it and i'm like nah you know when you turn like 22 you know it's, it's mandatory now like you're definitely an adult um <laughs> like you know what i mean so like what what are you looking to do like what is the future for rachel like what is this future my end goal, and I do love the shoe fairy, you know, we're a small startup and I think that there's so much growth. So I do plan to stay for as long as I possibly could. But because I love doing my side jobs too, I love all things social media, content creation. I would love some days to have my own like creative, like media agency, just all marketing, running like different accounts. Um, somewhere down the line, uh, you know, like anything's possible. So I'm not going to say like, if, you know, I'm sure it'll be a definite, but I would love to go back to FIT and become a professor for advertising and marketing. Well, there you go. There you go. You gotta, you gotta aim big. I see. Okay. All right. All right. All right. But that, but that's cool though. You want to go back and actually, you know, give back to some place that actually helped you grow. You know, at, that's, that's dope. That's dope. Cause a lot of people don't think to go back to their school. They want to just, you know, go somewhere else. You know, um, so I always like to leave an end, you know, all my podcasts, if you know, if you listen, I always end on a positive note. So there's a young lady sitting in front of you. She's asking you, you know, you've been through this, you've gone through that, you saw this, you saw that, you know, I'm stuck. I don't know what I want to do in life. 
you know what I mean? Like, what is a piece of advice that you would give her to give her the clarity that she may need to grow and move forward? I feel like maybe just because I ended up choosing a path like marketing, I feel like instead of even picking like, like a field that you want to work in, like I want to work in the beauty industry, you know, whatever, figure out like what exactly it is that you want to do. Do you want to like connect, but like on a broad level, do you want to connect with people? Do you, if you love beauty, do you want to make people feel beautiful where you're, you know, physically putting the makeup on them? Or do you want to market to them? Like you just kind of have to figure out like what exactly you like to do. So that when you clock in at a job or whatever it is that you do, you're happy with your day to day rather than what you're actually selling or like working for. But the funny part is, bodybuilding is not a weight loss competition guys that 10 pounds in 10 weeks it's not it <laughs> something i've learned all right, all right all right well you did good you know we appreciate you being in you know being a you know a special guest for that game you know what i mean because you know we don't really play it often it's kind of the first time i just want to see what it felt like you know because i just i just like to see what people think like off the top of their head i just like to know what they think and every time you say a different word um but you know once again just, you know, give everybody that information that they may need to, uh, you know, tap in with you. Give it to them one more time. Yeah, tap in with me, guys. My name is Rachel Connect. Uh, Instagram is Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L underscore Connect, K-N-E-C-H-T. My website is thatfitchick.net. If you want to see the work that I do for the Shoe Fairy, it's at the Shoe Fairy underscore. And the website is shoefairyofficial.com. Uh, you could send me a DM through Instagram or you could send me a message on my website. I believe that's still an option. Um, and that's kind of about it. If you want to find me on LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, anything. There you go. Same name. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, once again, I really appreciate you coming through. I re appreciate you being here. You know, unfortunately, you know, we can't record face to face because of this whole pandemic. They like to call it pandemic. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll be out of it soon. But, um, you know, once again, for everybody listening, you know where to find me at, Mr. I Am Digital and also Digitally Interrupted. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to either on your iTunes, on your Spotify, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe. You know where to find me. You know where to reach me at. If you feel like you could be a guest and you feel like you bring something to this uh, to this platform, please, by all means, shoot me a DM, shoot me an email at digitallyinterrupted at gmail.com. All right, guys, so we signing on out. Peace. You are now listening to the number one podcast. You have been digital interrupted. Oh. I am digital. Oh. digital.